Now, next, we're going to be working on our weekly forecast component here for our weather view. So if we head over to our finished application here, you can see that component is going to look like this, where we're going to have the day on the left. In the center, we're going to have the current condition. We're going to use our icons. And then we're also going to have the high and the low. All right. So let's head over to our view project and get started. So what we want to do first is we're going to create two new components here. The first one's going to be weekly forecast. And then the second one, which is going to actually contain each one of the values of the day, we want to create another component. This is going to be called daily forecast.view. Okay, so let's begin by just generating our basic view template here for each one of these components. Now for the weekly forecast for our template or our markup here, I'm going to start with just simply uh, giving this a div with a class of, let's see, weekly forecast. All right. And then inside of here, we're going to just leave this blank for now. So I'll save this and then we'll come down to our script tags here and we'll give this a name and we will say weekly forecast. And that should do it for now for this component. And then let's just go ahead and change the style tag to the SCSS scoped. Now for our actual daily forecast here, let's go ahead and create another view template. And inside of here, we're just going to create the markup for right now with the div with a class of daily forecast. Okay. And then inside of here, just for testing purposes, let's just go ahead and put a paragraph tag here and say daily forecast and then for our script tag let's give it a name here we're going to say daily forecast and let's capitalize the d here and then for our style tags we're just simply going to bring in our style and the scss scoped and that should do it for now so to begin let's go ahead and first import our weekly forecast component here into our weather view and inside of the weather wrap so we need to head over to our script tag here and import this. So we'll say weekly forecasts and the directory is going to be weekly forecast. And then for the actual component, we'll just say weekly forecast here. We'll do a new line and then we can save that. And then inside of our weather wrap here, we can import that. Do I have a copy that I do? Okay. Now, for this view, we're only going to need the uh, data here of forecast, just as we do in the hourly weather. So let's go ahead and copy this onto this component. And then inside a weekly forecast, we can just go ahead and accept that as a prop. And we'll say forecast. All right. So just as we did with our hourly weather, we're going to first off just console or log out to the console here the forecast value so let's do console dot log and we want to say this dot forecast and then let's head over to our application here and as you can see here we have this return value so it's going to be the same thing as we have seen inside of our hourly component instead this time we want to focus on the daily now this daily is an array of eight values which has a seven day forecast, or I should say eight day forecast, including the current day. Now we already are displaying the current day here. Um, actually that's the wrong one, <laughs> um, but I guess I'm console, I'll log into the console both ones. Okay. So currently we're already displaying the current day's uh, weather here in our application. So we don't necessarily want to also display the uh, current forecast for the day here in our weekly forecast component. So what we're going to be doing is something very similar to what we um, completed in our hourly view. We're going to be actually running a computed property on this array to alter the data because we don't want to uh, have this first one. We want to start with one or the second return value and then go all the way to the last one, which is seven. Okay. And then what we're going to do then is we're going to run a V4 loop through that new array and then we're going to output a daily forecast component for each one of those. So let's start off here. We'll say compute it. And let's see here. So we'll say compute it. And inside of here, we're going to create a new function called filtered 
list. And inside of here, we're simply going to return this dot forecast dot daily. And then we want to slice this. Okay. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, or I made a mistake on in the hourly weather, which we'll go back and fix in just a bit, is that when you pass, when you use a slice method, if you, if you say, for example, let's say one through seven, because we don't want the first one, but we want to go to the seventh return um, array. If we save this and then we counsel, um, well, sorry, if we do this, what's going to happen here is going to say one through seven, but it's not going to include the seventh one. So what we need to actually do is say one through eight. This way we get the seventh array um, and the eighth one doesn't exist, but it would not actually return because the slice, slice method, uh, you know, receives a starting value which you want to start at, and then it goes to the array you want to stop at, but does not actually include that array. So in order for us to get the full seven day forecast here, we're going to need to pass this to value of eight instead of seven. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, now that we have this, we can actually run our V4 loop here and then um, create a daily forecast component for each one of those. So before we do that, let's just simply import this daily forecast. And daily forecast there and then we don't have our components hooked up in here yet so we'll say components and then we'll say daily forecast so the markup is going to look very similar to our hourly weather so we're going to have a div with a class of container then inside of this container we're going to have a div with the class of daily and then inside of this div we're simply going to uh, output our weekly or daily forecast component here. All right. So now if we were to save this and we head over to our application here, what did we do? Oh, we forgot the comma there, so we'll get an error. So now if we come over here, we should see that we're going to have our daily forecast component inserted into our view here. So what we want to do is you want to run a V4 loop on here through our new computed filtered list. So we're going to say V4 and we're going to pass this a day and then also inside of here we want to give it an index and then we're going to say in and then we want to say filtered list and then we need to also pass it a key value here and we're going to give that the value of our index okay now to use each one of our days here inside of this component we need to actually bind this value of day to this component here so we'll say day equals day. All right, so now if we head over here, you should see we have seven uh, return values of daily forecast for the seven day forecast. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that is all working great. So now what we can do is head over to our daily forecast component here and begin to actually uh, style this out and dynamically insert all of the data we need to do. So first thing we want to do here is go into our script tag here and accept the prop of day. There we go. And now we have access to that data. So let's first start off here by getting rid of this paragraph tag. And we're going to create a new div. And inside of this div, we're going to nest the day. So we're going to create a span here. And we're going to pass in our curly brackets. And we're going to say new date. And we're going to pass this the value of this dot day dot dt. Because if we go over to our uh, console here, you can see that daily in the array, we have pretty much the same values as we did inside of our hourly. So we can get this DT right here, which is going to be uh, the timestamp for that current day. So what we want to do now is times this by 1000. And then we want to convert this to local string. And this is going to accept the value of EN US and then we also want to pass it a object to get the uh, format of this, which we want it to be week, day, and we want to pass it the value of long. So if we save this and come over to our application now, you should see Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, because currently the day I'm recording this is Thursday evening. So you can see here that the next day we're going, or sorry, I'm recording this on Wednesday evening, so the next day is going to be Thursday. So that is all working properly. Now, the next thing we want to do is our condition. 
which is going to be that icon. So we're going to create a div with a class of, not container, condition. And inside of here, we're going to have our image tag. And just as we did in the hourly function or the hourly component, we're going to be binding this SRC value. And we're going to be using the require here. And then what we want to do is some interpolation. So we're going to use backticks. And we want to navigate two folders out and then go into our public folder. And we'll say conditions. And then we'll say, so we're going to use our interpolation to grab that icon code. So we're going to say this dot day dot weather. Now this is an array and we want the first return array. So we're going to say zero and then we'll say icon and then we're going to come out of here and then we're going to say SVG. So if we save this now, the images are going to be very large because we haven't um, styled those yet. So, but you can see that is all working properly. Now, the last thing we want to do is actually we want to insert the uh, temperature here. So we're going to create another div here with the class of weather. And inside of here, we're going to have two spans. The first one is going to be for um, our high temperature. So we're going to say high. And then what we want to do is pass our curly brackets here. And we're going to be using the math dot round because as you recall, these return a decimal. And we want them to be a whole number. So we'll say math dot round, and we'll say this dot day dot temp, and then we want the value of max. So since it's gonna be a pretty similar markup here, I'm going to copy this and we're gonna change the class to low, and then we'll change the value inside of this um, math dot round method to min. All right, so if we save that now, you should see that we have all the information we need for this uh, component but you can see that the styling still needs to be uh, completed here. So let's head back over to that component and begin to style this out. Let's begin with a few line breaks here in our style tag. And the first thing we want to target is our daily forecast. There we go. And what we want to do in here is we want to set the display to flex to put these into a row. And we want to align the items to the center. And to justify the content, we want that to be space between. And then for the color of everything in here, we want to make this white. So we're going to say color and we'll say FFF for white. All right. Now inside of here, we're going to do some nesting. So for all of the divs in here, we want to give this a flex of one. And that's going to be it for all of our divs. Now, next up, I want to target our condition, which is going to contain our image. And inside of here, we want to set the display to flex. We want to align items to the center and then justify content to the center as well. And then for our image inside of here, we want to give this a width of 20 pixels. Okay, so that's going to be it for our condition. Now, if we save this, you should already see that things are starting to look a lot better. But you can see that these here need to be on the right hand side. So let's go ahead and finish that off. So what we want to do is underneath condition for our weather, we're going to set this to display flex. And then what we're going to do is justify the content to the flex end. And you can see here that it's going to push it to the right hand side, which is going to space these out um, much better. All right. Now, the next thing we want to do is for our span tags in here, we want to give this a minimum width of 20 pixels. And then for our high span, what we want to do is we want to give this a much larger, or I should say much bolder font style. So we're going to give it a font weight of 500. And then to separate the high and the low, we're just simply going to put a margin right on the high of 12 pixels. And that's going to do it for the styling for our individual uh, component here of daily forecast. Now we still need to do some styling to the actual um, whether I should say the weekly forecast component. So let's begin to finish this off. So what we want to do here is inside of our style tags. Again, I'm going to create a few new line breaks and we're going to say daily forecast or sorry, this is going to be weekly forecast. And inside of here, we want to give this a padding of 30 pixels on the top and bottom and then zero on the left and right. 
And we're going to give this a border bottom as we have done to all of the components uh, so far. Border bottom of one pixel, solid, and then RGBA. And we want to pass this the value of white. So we're going to say 255, 255, 255, and then a 70% opacity. Okay. Now inside of here, we're going to do some nesting. And for our daily class, we want to give a margin bottom of 24 pixels to each one of these uh, individual days. That'll just go ahead and create some much better separation. Now we don't want this to have a margin bottom on the very last one. So we're going to use a pseudo selector here and say daily. And then we're going to say last child. And we want to set the margin bottom to zero. So now if we head over to our component, you can, you can see here that we have the desired layout for each one of our components for the weekly forecast.